causality and stability after we are done looking at causality and stability we will look at response to suddenly applied inputs so the question that we are interested is is when is a system stable to answer this question we know that the criterion that we have been using is bibo stability so the criterion for stability is bibo stability this implies that you need the impulse response summed up over all n to be less than infinity so that is h of n must belong to the class of l1 we have already seen that this implies e to the j omega must belong to the region of convergence now typically systems in practice are causal so suppose the system is causal so this implies that roc is outside of a certain circle for stability we require that e to the j omega must belong to the roc and then if you put these two facts together namely roc is outside of a certain circle when the system is causal and for stability this roc must contain the unit circle so these two together imply all the poles must lie where strictly inside the unit circle must lie strictly inside the unit circle so all the poles must lie strictly inside the unit circle so this is analogous to what is happening in the continuous time case there if the signal is right sided then the roc is to the right of a certain vertical line and if the system is stable the impulse response must be absolutely integrable which means the j omega axis must be part of the region of convergence therefore if you combine those two facts together namely roc is to the right of a certain vertical line and the roc must contain the j omega axis for stability then you infer that all poles must lie strictly in the left half plane for anti causal systems what can you say about the roc roc is inside a certain circle right
and now suppose we also want stability then these two together imply all poles must be strictly where outside the unit circle so again the counterpart for this is in the continuous time case if the system is anti causal in terms of its impulse response then roc is to the left of a certain vertical line and you want the j omega axis to be part of the region of convergence for stability putting these two facts together you conclude that all poles must lie strictly in the right half plane therefore when you say uh, for stability poles must lie in the left half plane in general what you are also assuming is causality so similarly here in the discrete time case typically we say that for stable systems you need all the poles to lie inside the unit circle the underlying assumption is causality and in terms of discrete time systems suppose you had 1 minus az inverse to the m mod z greater than mod a then if you recall this is nothing but n plus 1 times n plus 2 up to n plus m minus 1 by m minus 1 factorial times a to the n u of n this is what the uh, impulse response is for an mth order pole let us consider the case where m is Uh, 2 and 3 just to get a feel so if m were 2 this will be n plus 1 times a to the n u of n and this system is stable if mod a is less than 1 therefore this is less than infinity where each of n corresponds to n plus 1 times a to the n so we are looking at the behavior of n times a to the n u of n and this decays to zero as n tends to infinity and if you had m equal to 3 you have n plus 1 times n plus 2 by 2 factorial a to the n u of n and you will be looking at in terms of time domain behavior you will be looking at the behavior of n squared a to the n u of n because if you multiply this out this will be n squared plus 3n plus 2 so if you look at n squared times a to the n u of n again this tends to zero as n tends to infinity 
So, in general n to the k a to the n u of n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity and this also is true. So, this is less than infinity. So, no matter what k is exponential dk eventually wins over polynomial growth. Therefore, the impulse response dies down and the impulse response also is absolutely summable. This you can also infer from the fact that the pole is inside the unit circle and hence this sequence is uh, belonging to the class of L1. Therefore, if the system is causal, your system has to have poles strictly inside the unit circle if it is causal, if you want the system to be also stable. And exactly the opposite is true, if the system is strictly anti-causal, you want all the poles to lie outside the unit circle. 